<laughs> yeah. Hello, people. Good morning and welcome to the Sun Dragon Side Show. The Adventures of Liz and Rebecca. Oh my Ooh, gosh, you changed it up. I on me. changed what are you it doing? up. I had to remember stuff or think about stuff. <laughs> Hi. I, okay, before I sit, so I'm Rebecca. I'm the owner of Sun Dragon Art and Fiber. And um, it was foggy coming in and a little chilly, Brevard, North Carolina. I'm Liz. I'm the minion there. Mm -hmm. So before I sit down, I'm showing off. <laughs> I'm showing off the hands in my pockets shawl that has no pockets yet. The pockets are made. They're just not attached. I feel like a bat, which is awesome. It but, is so my, gloriously. My oh, my gosh. It's like, I love that. I'm hot in it actually right now, and I'm going to take it off soon. Um, but this is this was Saturday's class. So I got the sewing, sewing, I got the crocheting done. See, look at this. So I haven't sewn in. I think I got one end sewn in, but not cut. And I don't remember okay. which one it is now. So I'm going to sew it in again. Probably. Um, because a lot of stuff is going on during the class, but 10 skeins with this in the two pockets, 10 skeins of. Morocco ultra wool no ultra alpaca chunky yes okay um but it's so lovely it's like a weighted blanket at home like I can fold it in half and a noticeable temperature difference when I take it off yeah I can fold it in half and put it on my lap and then my cat snuggles in it and then he doesn't bite me hopefully so um but yeah I wanted to show that off to y'all it I made a video yesterday on how to do half double crochets in the third loop for this. And then there's a different texture stitch here, which one of my crocheters over the weekend we were doing, she's new, she's doing very well. She had to learn the difficult third loop. It's not super difficult, but it's weird, especially if you're working with a yarn you're not used to. Wonky. It's wonky. And then we got to the, we were doing sample of, the stitches in it and she got to the middle part and went oh this is easy i said yeah, yeah. so um so that's easier. 10 skeins of ultra this, alpaca this plus uh okay. these two large pockets which now that i'm done with the shawl don't seem so large anymore they will fit in the middle and have room before i hit the borders for pockets for this that that's 10 this is this is 10 skeins of a chunky yarn right here this is almost <laughs> 10 shape. skeins of saxony which is this is 100 grams that's 50 grams knit versus crochet yes crochet I, eats up your i do like, have a little this. a little pile of my leftovers but like this is all i have left of one ball which you know this is all I have left of another ball. Mm -hmm. So, you know. The 10 skeins got your had, sweater. Yeah, this is what's left of the 10 skeins. So Which they can't see. I, I know. Um, Here, we, we can do this maybe. Ah, yes. Mm -hmm. So I probably could have only done one ball of red because this is, you know, a pretty big blob of the red blob but in, the red. in yeah. order to do the the but you had things you wanted to do edge, i needed the extra mm -hmm. the extra so so yeah i'm not wearing any of my great creations today because it's toasty in here it's, it's hotter in here than in my house so i'm overheated <laughs> yeah i, I <laughs> started to keep costs down at my house so you know started off wearing my textured sweater and i got all the way inside and went uh uh but at least you wore it up, right? In yeah, I wore it in the car, and it's a little chilly outside. So. Yeah, just a little, not a lot, just a little. It was, it was nice to wear up, mm -hmm. but then I got in and I was like, mm. yeah, I mean, when I first walked in, I was wearing my um, luminous summer. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Yes, the cotton top, and but then also my cardigan. This guy over because, that, and I was like, oh, and that was just from walking around the building, so um so you wanna i will when you're at a good point yeah i'm gonna it's, this like, is the sleeve like, that never ends i like liz to talk first because <laughs> then i don't monopolize and i monopolize when she's done so i finished it i even got ends woven in and everything mm. on my mm. textured sweater which i'm sorry it won't show up on the camera because you it's can you can take a sleeve close to the camera 
and and just show a little so and then put it on or something yeah. it's inside out yeah or but is it not? you can't tell no, if I you was can read Morse code it. the way she did it, maybe you can tell. <laughs> I was folding it the the yeah. So there it is. See, and I might try lightening. See if I lighten the 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 video too much afterwards, then we just become ghosts. So, so. it's it's got Morse code on the sleeves. And then like in in between every row on the sleeves it's got two rows of just plain knit and then when i got to the cuffs i did morris code without any separation it's it's funny because the way you say it don't you don't say I, it wrong I, other people say it too it sounds like you're talking about morris the cat yeah i know she's not it's all good and and i've heard other people pronounce morse code this and I, when i say it it sounds like it, it's i know it's, it's, would you like to try it on and show people yep. how lovely it looks I was, and at the bottom of the garter there's enlarged morse code okay watch so, out you're hitting the sorry no i don't know if that does anything i feel like it doesn't pick you up if there's fabric over the mic that's all so and you're wearing darker colors i'm wearing darker so colors so i'm all gonna... dark and broody today yeah i wore darker colors because this dress i haven't showed off on video oh is that I wore it on your, saturday that's your gray plaid or your it's black my plaid? black plaid yeah nice black and gray so oh oh and you Would got you, what what am i doing just pull it down just a little bit it's down okay so super cute and then i have a little button well not a button a, a little shawl pin to that's to cool. hold it close but it's it's, uh, it's thistle it's thistles. the pin has a yes. thistle so my morse code sweater and is this done. is the one that we talked about like it didn't need an extra collar on it like the edging no. of it just looked good yeah. did you do your so slip stitch i thing? did slip stitch all the way around it just to stabilize it a mm -hmm. little bit because i didn't want it to to grow and so sweet it's done it will be great for next week when the temperatures are in the 50s and the 30s um like 50s for the high yeah okay i'm like yeah not 30s for the high 50s for the we're high. gonna have a couple of nights where the high or the low is in the 50s okay and then a day when it's like 60s and 40s and then just crashing into the 50s and the 30s it's gonna be awesome <laughs> liz is happy and so then i was hoping hoping that i would get this one done too that leads to no sleep um in yes my experience so so it because I fiddled with the collar and the cuffs in different ways. Um, this is my stripey one. I like the stripes. The stripes are so cool. So the sleeves are stockinette mm -hmm. and the body is garter. And did the squishy rose. Because it's flat except for the sleeves. Yes. You had you had plans. I had plans and then I was like, ooh. I could do a double knit cuff. What do you mean by a double knit cuff? I mean, knit the inside flat up and knit the outside flat up in two different yarns and to where it's mm -hmm. a double thick cuff. And that doesn't I, look like that's what you it, did. It was, and then it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Shout out to Carol. She was, she was, you know, you can do it. You can do it. And I did it. And I even I all this. even found a two color cast off for it, and I, you know, where and I looked at it, and I'm like, it flares mm -hmm. because it's adding in a whole nother set of anyway. It would have looked probably better on a tighter uh, needle, mm -hmm. like if I'd done the whole sweater on a smaller size, it probably would have looked awesome. So what did you do instead? So I pulled it out <laughs> and I crocheted it. I'm like, yeah. When I look over there, I, and you say double knit, I see crochet. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. So yeah. um, but that, but you know, she learned. Okay, teaching moment that even the with the doing it and having to pull it out and everything that was still a valuable experience because I'm sure you learned a lot. You I also did. learned what you didn't want. I also learned that double knitting, while it sounds super <laughs> super awesome, you purl one side and you knit the other, so oh. it's like, um, 
were you like on steroids were you like knitting one stitch and then purling like, well, like switching colors back and yes forth? and you have to keep the the yarn for the fronts the outside it, when you do a knit i was using it for my knit stitch so you do the knit stitch and then you bring the yarn to the front so they don't twist so they don't twist and so that it doesn't show up on the back side which is where because you'll have v's on the back and v's on the front and not there's a lot of tea. purling involved in that so i dabbled it was fun i not sure what i so <laughs> you see what happened was. you see what happened was <laughs> i wanted i wanted to do like a cuff that you see it all the time in like hats where the brim is folded up or whatever so it's, it's a double color. thick not well, necessarily uh well, most of them are, you do a provisional cast on and then you knit so long and then you fold it up and you join all the stitches in the round. That's what, yeah. And then you keep knitting with just like, so the brim or the cuff is double thick. But in order to do that, you have to do bottom up. In that fashion, yes. Yes. So my brain all evening on Saturday was like, ooh, I could, no. Ooh, maybe. Mm. So then I was like, ooh, I could do double knitting because it, you know, kind of, it was fun until it wasn't. <laughs> uh, so what I probably would have considered, which you may have considered and rejected, the opposite version of the provisional cast on it's is just doing your cuff longer and yeah. folding it in and just tacking it down so i Did didn't want that? to sew that was the thing i was willing to do a three needle bind off but i didn't want to sew your because hatred of sewing is so much larger than your hatred of purling oh yeah because <laughs> see i'm thinking it's, i'm thinking was... about well you may not have considered this before you jumped in and then once you jumped in we're like Whoa. no i thought but... about folding it up and sewing it mm. but saxony doesn't so well yeah you have to be very it's it's one of those loose yarns that that if you too much friction over and over and over i could i can understand that yeah. you have to be very gentle sewing. because i just i think about the amount of purling and versus the amount of sewing and i get it though yeah i i had i had like in my head was like okay this is but i don't want to sew it i want to just be able to three needle bind off and i'm done so yeah, I like that. I want to just <laughs> universal so, sign it, for three needle bind off. <laughs> and then, so like, I would, there was, I would have Kitchenered actually, but that's more sewing, so never okay. mind. That wouldn't have worked. So there was that whole debacle with the cuff, and then there was the debacle with the collar, because there had been discussion about oh you should do a crab stitch and i did a crab stitch and you it look didn't like look poop. right yeah and because i'm kind of going around corners and you have to skip and if i skipped stitches then the color underneath showed through mm -hmm. and i was like yeah that just doesn't look right so i slip stitched all the way across and then i did a single crochet in the back loop of the sips slip stitch all the way back across and then i did a herringbone double crochet oh she's getting all fancy now. you got all fancy and but it gave it enough of a color that i like that you know yeah and it's more and it flat matches and, it matches yeah it matches the cuffs on my sleeves but not the cuffs on the 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 hem of the sweater is just garter if someone looks at you and so. says the hem on the bottom of your sweater doesn't match the hem everywhere else i would take off your sweater and smack them with it I, I mean, probably I keep will. saying that, and I'm not a violent person, but yarn is soft. Actually, what I'll do is I'll go get my textured sweater and slap them with that. Because <laughs> it's got messages on it. <laughs> or you can just wave it in their face and go, ha, nanny, nanny, boo, boo, if we're going to not be violent. You know? Yeah. So I, last night when I went to bed, I am on the last, I'm in here on the other sleeve. And I was like, oh, I could no who am i kidding it, yeah so i am going to the the it's just a few more rows i'll stay up a little longer it'll be fine doesn't tend to go well it, for anybody it i i looked at the clock 
as I was doing and found out I could do four rows in 10 minutes. I was like, four rows a minute? What? Yeah, yeah. four rows in 10 <laughs> minutes. And like, when I figured this out, I was like over an hour away from finishing the sleep. And then I was like, you know, ice cream sounds good. So that took a <laughs> whole 15 minutes. And then mm -hmm. I, I looked at the clock again and was like, you know. I stayed up too late last night. And yeah, I was working on, because the video I filmed and then helping my neighbor out and then I didn't start the newsletter until after dinner. And and then it was like maybe by 9 30 I got the newsletter out and I went, but I wanted to work on things today that were not on the computer. So I stayed up to work on a couple things. And we'll see how long I last today. My I went I went to sleep and lately I've been waking up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom or I'm too hot and throw off a cover or whatever. And I I laid down and I went to sleep. And the next thing I knew, my phone was ringing with my mom's ringtone, but it was my alarm. And I was like, oh my gosh, what's going on? Oh, okay. <laughs> Parents call at a random time. Something, something's wrong. Horribly. No, just your alarm. Just my, I, I might go ahead. I have to have like my mom's ringtone or I have to change alarms every so often because if I don't, I'll sleep through them. Uh, so. I, I had my cat helpfully wake me up at 5.30. And he's been that doing that nice. between 5 and 5.30. He's like, dude, you should be up. We should be going downstairs and you should be feeding me. And the thing is that I don't get up at 5.30 and feed him. But he's decided that's the time I should that's, get up. That's... And and here's the kicker is because I'm trying to be like kind of healthy or something. I started walking this weekend and I was like, well, if I get up early enough, I'll have time to do a short walk before work. Maybe. Like not the mile long ones, which again, for me, that's long right now. Didn't used to be, but right now a mile in my neighborhood with all the Hills means I need a shower afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, and it takes a while. So just around my little block, my little loop. Um, so I was like, I'll set my alarm for six. And I have that, the sleep tracker thing that will gently wake you up sometime between five thirty and six, then it'll find a time when you're kind of coming out of whatever gently wake you up cat woke me up at 5 27 and i was and like well, by this then is your alarm now. was like hey you're awake my alarm was gonna be like oh good 5 30 and so i had to turn that off. i had to shut that off and let it do its thing for the night and it gave me very low sleep quality because yes um and so i set my regular alarm for like six and that became 6 30 and I still walked a loop before coming in, but we also have a shorter show today. And because of we something. both got in at nine. Yeah, we both got in at nine. But life. Um, yeah, life. The cat has just decided this is the time to do things and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, really? You have an internal clock that's like amazing and you use it for not good. Evil. Yes. Um. So I worked on this last night. Uh, this is someone uh, scheduled a one-on-one -on -one appointment with me to learn. How to do entrelock. So I pulled out my entrelock to refresh myself last night and did a few more rows of squares and little triangles and things. It and so looks so cute. It is very cute. It's really good to do with a color changing yarn. You build little squares or rectangles. Like, see, I've got two on this row. I have one more to go right there. And then I'll go back the other way with triangles and rectangles. Um, but one skein of Ito makes a really long scarf because, see, I still have yarn left and i have all of this already and it it's written it's um this is the entrelock scarf by freckles and pearls and it's it's written for curion or silk garden which is this is like the equivalent of like four four balls of four curion. balls of curion which is basically what scarf calls for so one ball of ito is fantastic because it makes it look like you did we were talking about the entrelock last week it's another thing that kind of peaked my, I was like, ooh, ooh. it makes it look like you're changing colors and doing crazy things, but you're not. You could do it with multiple balls of yarn for each row to make it look like you really did weave. Like I'm, I'm kind of intrigued to do this with two different colors of like a basic yarn. And every time I, I have a, a knit row that goes across and a purl row. And so every time I knit, I go with one color and purl, I go with the other. 
Um, but I think I'm going to have a ton of ends to weave in, but, it, but it would probably look like I was weaving with two colors, like strips of fabric with two colors could be really neat. Too many projects going to like, probably tackle that. But, um, so I worked on that a little this weekend. Um, rebel squirrel knit along. Oh, look, my doctor who sticker from my mug, um, rebel squirrel knit along. I think I showed this off before I haven't. So I probably haven't done much since, did I show this off last week? Uh, maybe on Thursday. When we were well, it hasn't that. grown since Thursday. Yeah. The class for that is this Saturday. It's the first class, not the second, because um, the first one was canceled due to, or rescheduled due to Ian, which didn't hit us, thankfully. Um, so that's something I'd love to finish because it's the knit along for this month. And no, we don't have kits, but we can help you pick out yarn if you'd like. Um, I started my sweater. The the Lara one. Uh, I should find. Ooh, ooh, I don't think I have. I don't think I have barber cord, so I'm just going to put some stitches on a random um, needle. That I have looks here. so cool. Cause I want to show off, like I'm almost done with the yoke. Like it was kind of addictive this weekend and it's, it's really thick. Uh, it's I'm on a size 11 needle. So this won't go as fast as with barber cords. Cause I'm trying to be careful slipping my stitches, but I'd like to put this on. Um, I did a lot of other little things. Like I started the Yakima has been calling my name cause people are coming in looking for sport weight patterns. Or they're coming and shopping for yarn for patterns that require sport weight and we don't have a ton in the shop we've got like the super solid um shetland walkabout but they they don't want super solid wool they're like oh that's itchy which you know it is but it's it's wool and it will be wonderful and last forever shetland wool is we breed specific roving gangs of sheep so is it roving gangs of sheep then? It's not it's necessarily roving gangs of sheep, but it feels a lot like roving gangs. Oh, okay. Of sheep. So it's like, it's yeah. they're 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 a very specific breed that will knock you over. And I was like, are they private then. school bull bullies then? No, <laughs> like, are they clicks at private school? No, <laughs> no, no. They um, yeah, they're they're it's it's a it's a breed of sheep that is durable. That is that is sturdy it's great for color work or um it's great for outerwear outer it's wear, great yes. we've had people buy it to make um like door stoppers like crazy looking gnomey things and stuff we've had people buy it for garments but it's again not soft ones against your neck type of thing um and <clears throat> so then we have the yakima which i brought in it's a single ply from plymouth so it's it's loosely constructed and it is um tonally dyed and it's superwash merino and yak so the yak kind of counteracts the superwash i don't think it's uh machine washable but um so i'm not sure why they use superwash merino maybe it's just got a different feel but it's so pretty so and it's so soft so i'm making a couple things out of that so if i i'm telling you about it now while i'm slipping stitches so that okay yep it is hand wash lay flat too dry Ooh. i want to show y'all when she gets the... done with the yoke it's gonna slow down it's it, well maybe unless i put my mind to it uh you can kind of see the yokey part in there our our cameras make everything look kind of dark so but I'm almost at my first skein, done with my first skein of this. And I'm also almost done with, with at least the, the lace part of the yoke, which is really fun. So yes, I did pick the dark, dark teal. I really wanted the, if I'm going to make something for myself, eventually I'm going to do the mossy one. I probably need to reorder both of these colors though, <clears throat> but this is exciting and it's going to be so super warm and wonderful. It looks really, the color looks really good on it. And I'd, I'd keep wearing it for the rest of this, but I don't want it to fall off the random. Oh, look, it's on my, yeah. <laughs> it's on my pigtail thing. Um, 
So let me show you the two Yakima things I'm working on. And then I brought in the kicker. I finished my wedding blanket. Mm. So, so two things. Um, I said, ooh, there's a pattern. This is not, this is not, this is one of the colors, but it's not the one about straight. There's a pattern in the, I'm all over the place today, people. Thanks for sticking with me. It's like, look at this beanie. Well, this one's the beret, beret or beanie, depending on which style you want to make. And I was like, ooh, it's sport weight. It's great. I'll knit that up. And then I looked at the instructions and saw crochet hook and went, huh, okay, it's crochet. I didn't think there were any crochet patterns in this book, in this latest pom-pom. There is. This hat is crochet. Um, it needs a lot more focus than like working at the shop or working on knit night because there's a lot of back and forth short rows and there's slip stitches. And not only are they slip stitches, which um, is a really flat stitch, there's slip stitches in the back loop. And then there are slip stitches with yarn over. So essentially like a half double crochet, but you when you pull up a loop from the fabric, you just go through everything. You don't pause and do another yarn over. So what it is creating though on the right side are these little leafy shapes, but there's a lot it looks of really cool. And a lot of fudging involved, I find. Yeah, it looks really, really cool. But it's a whole bunch of these to make up the ha the beanie. And actually, this this is going to be the side that's on my head, like that. Um. So it, but it should only take one skein of yarn. So I picked the bright orange because it's really fun, and almost all the other colors of Yakima we have, we have something like it in the shop. So I'm making that. This is so soft. It's really been fun. We'll see how it goes. But since I keep starting new projects, uh, will I stall out? Probably. So then I said, I went back to the drawing board because I would like to also have a knit sample because this stuff is lovely and every once in a while people buy it. But I think if there were samples, then people would buy more of it. So the Dodge Shawl, D-O-D-G-E, um, was just released. It's by Wolf and Fawn Designs. And I was like, oh, it's a little triangle shawl. And it looks like it's really simple up top and then lace at the bottom. And won't that be fun? Because when it gets big, then it's interesting and I'll actually keep going. And I found that uh, the top of it that looks just really simple and maybe stock net is actually like a knit one, slip one with yarn in front. So it's kind of ribbing, but kind of not. It has texture. It has texture. It's purling on the backside. So I don't know if I can talk Liz into doing it. But on the front side, it's knit one, slip one with yarn in front, which creates, it's almost like ribbing, but not quite. You're not knitting and purling on the same row. So it's been keeping me going, but you can see how the tonality of the purple just kind of comes out in little spits and spurts. And it's just so soft. It's really nice. This one, the the hat I'm doing on an E, I'm doing on teeny tiny. And I did not get, touch the, I did not check my gauge. So it could be a hot mess when I'm done. It could be too big or too small. Um, but I knew that going in, if I don't test my gauge, you know, all bets are off. But it was like, do a swatch in pattern. And I was like, uh. so um, I'm on a six for the shawl, which is sport weight is probably more comfortable for a tight definition, defined stitch on like a four. So a six helps it be nice and soft. So this is exciting. We have a bunch of colors of Yakima. This should this shawl should take two skeins. And it's one of those, you increase four stitches on the right side and two stitches on the wrong side. So it's going to be a wide triangle shawl, not necessarily super deep, but much wider than it is deeper because of that. So that's been fun to explore too. Um, we need to go open the shop soon. So I need to, the reason I brought a whole extra load from the car is... I did actually weave my ends in even on this. Ooh, I finished my wedding blanket. And I've decided I've been hanging it over the railing dry, just using its own weight um, up in the loft to try to make the stitch definition better on this because I think blocking it is going to be a pain in the bum. So. Oh my gosh. It's that huge. Looks right? so awesome. And and the top edge, because I bound off as loosely as I could, it's not as rigid as the bottom edge, and that'll just deal. But this is where I ended. And here, if we can, like, 
pulled up the bottom half. <laughs> so this is the bottom half. I started down down here, and each section, every time I ran out of ball a ball of yarn, I changed one color. I was holding two skeins of Cascade 220 together every single time. This is the, I think together again is the name of the pattern. And I really love it because it's reversible. I have a few spots I need to clean up the fuzz that my cat made when he pulled on it. But um, to go through it really it, fast. It is heavy. It's heavy. Yeah. So I'm going to try to go through it fast. This is like four pounds, four and a half of yarn at least. So I have light gray and charcoal and then charcoal and it might have, it's not turtle, smoke heather. Smoke heather. And then smoke heather and... um. I can't remember what this blue was. It's the it's, sky blue or something. No, it's it's like it's not smoke heather, but it's like I'll find out and let you know. Um, it's but it it wasn't as bright blue as you would think. It's kind of a greeny blue, and then um that greeny blue with the West Point heather, and then the West Point heather with the midnight heather, which is almost a navy but not quite, and then the midnight heather with um it's like bitter chocolate. And then bitter chocolate with walnut heather, lots of heather yarns in this. And then walnut heather with um, extra creme cafe, extra creme cafe with, uh, it's is it almond? Almond. And then almond with a crew. And I had to, I think, let's see. Oh, it's over here. I ran out of the a crew, the, I, I ran out of the almond right here. For holding the two skeins together at the end so my, on yarn chicken i did this many stitches with two strands of a crew and and so if anyone's paying attention the end the end bind off is a little different i don't think it but is, um it it's like yeah it's all the ends are woven in there were it's so a good many ends blanket. and it's a good two people can snuggle under this right I hope <laughs> it's kind of huge. Kind of. But um, so that was my adventure in marling, which is the technical term for when you're holding two skeins of yarn together. And you can see how different colors show up. She's walking up right now at different times. And um, I don't know if we locked the door. Probably not. I can go over if you want. If she's if she's trying for the door. My appointment which is in five minutes if she's just sitting just let her okay can you ask her to just hold on we need to finish up here and we'll just go over the schedule real fast for uh the week and okay so we have virtual sit and stitch tonight and that is going to be from 7 to 9 p.m. on Zoom. You can get in with the shop phone number. You want to tell them the shop phone number, Liz? 828-877-3550. And tomorrow we have the VSC edition. I'm probably, we, we might meet over there. But um, tomorrow we have the VSC edition. And I think we're going to do the new Cocoa Knits products. Sweet. So we'll see. I wanted to test those this weekend. And I didn't have a chance because life is too crazy and busy. So um, then Thursday is the Dear Becky and Lizzie. If you have any questions, then you should email them. Liz at sundragonartandfiber.com. And, um, and then we have another virtual sit and stitch on Friday, 7 to 9 p.m. And the Sunday dual platform sit and stitch is this weekend from 1 to 5 yep. p.m. We'll talk more about that tomorrow and Thursday. And we have more to talk to you about in, in terms of SAF as well. We didn't get yep. around to it because I have too many things to show off yep. today. But we're hoping to be at SAF on Sunday. And and we're hoping you find us there. So take, you, you need to be watching for how we look. Pay attention to how we look in masks because we'll be wearing masks there. So just like this. Ready? Okay. So. We will see you all next time. We're going to go. We got stuff to do. Have a good day. Bye. Bye.